This vehicle should be fairly simple to build, shouldn't it? Some nice pics of the actual wagon and off you go. All these wagons look similar but they aren't identical. I determined the wagon's length according to the round wooden rods I purchased for the build. They are 10 cm long and have a diameter of 4 mm. I used balsa for the chassis and the floor panel. I ordered the bundle for a very reasonable price. Balsa can be glued with CA glue and that's what I use, but you must make sure for proper alignment before you apply it. The glue works much faster than on any other material, so you can't make any corrections without breaking the wood. For the sidewalls I used bamboo toothpicks, the wooden rods I mentioned before and narrow strips of balsa. As you saw on the pics of the actual wagons, they all look bent by age, wind and weather. I wanted to achieve this effect. I only didn't know how to do it. Being unable to drill precisely into the rods helped a lot, although that wasn't what I intended to do. Sometimes we should be grateful for mishaps like that. Drilling into the boards at an angle wasn't that difficult, but again I wasn't able to drill them at the same angle. I couldn't have done it that irregular if I had wanted to do it. To enhance the wood grain I carefully scrubbed the boards of the floor panel with a brass wire brush. Don't apply any pressure or your boards will disintegrate. And then I realized that the side wall was too high. I had finished only one of them when I found out, so I cut off the toothpicks at a more appropriate length. I had to carve the ends to get pinpointed tips. As usual I didn't do any drawings and you'll see that it would have been better to do it this time. I could have avoided a couple of mistakes and the necessary corrections. This time I tried to drill the holes as precise as possible. It didn't work. The rods moved and rolled a bit so I ended up with the same result as before. The wood cracked in a couple of areas but that was something I really liked. It adds to the appearance of old wood. Both side walls glued into place. They are as bent as I wanted them to be even though it happened rather accidentally. Next thing to do was building front and tailgate. I decided to use 0.2mm copper sheet for most steel parts of the wagon. I bought it years ago and never really used it. Building, er, uh, bending the four shackles was simple. I punched tiny holes into their ends and glued everything into place. After that I opened the holes a bit more by drilling. I inserted a bolt into one hole each. A splint with chain was glued into the other holes. That way front and tailgate could be swung open to one side. On the actual wagons the rods can be taken off completely. Silly me noticed it too late. I could have avoided this mistake by better planning and I guess I learned my lesson now. I didn't while I was building the wagon so be prepared for more examples. And here's another one. I could have done the cutaways before assembling the chassis. The main advantage of balsa is that you don't need brutal force to cut it. A sharp knife does a job and that saved me here. Here you can see all wooden parts for the front axle. I built it accordingly to what I saw on the pigs. On one hand using balsa was a very good decision, especially for the bent pieces of the hitch. I just outlined them on the board and cut them out with a hobby knife. On the other hand I had to repair some of the parts several times because they broke under little forests. The whiffle tree for example broke twice. Since the hitch broke too, I glued fortifications to the underside. And now for the axles. I used pieces of 1mm copper wire and 0.2mm copper sheet that are bent around the wire from one side. Then I glued the wire into place and cut the assembly into halves. <laughs> 
Two more pieces of copper sheet were needed to be attached to the wooden structure. I made a little mistake while cutting the axle, but this will be hidden so I wasn't too angry with me. Some dry fitting with the wagon. And here you see how and why my mistake disappeared. I glued copper strips around the wooden structure and the axle assembly. This was done on the actual vehicles too. Two more strips were glued around the middle section. Next I attached another strip right aft of the Whippertree's pivot point. Some more dry fitting. The pencil marks were made for the brake that I had to build later. I added another board between the chassis and the floor panel. The piece of copper sheet serves as a stop for the front axle's pivot. Since everything's made from balsa, the pivot could work its way through the wood without the sheet. The rear axle was constructed in a similar way. The opening accommodates the chassis beam. Hey man, guess what? What's that, Pops? I met a chick. Oh yeah, what kind of chick? Real chick, a real chick. Yeah. How old is she? Sixteen. Again, I glued strips of copper sheet around the wooden structure. Glued into place. Try fitting with both axles. And then I repeated the steps I did on the front axle. The rear wheels will have a larger diameter so the axle sits higher than the front axle. A picture of an actual whiffle tree. There's a pull ring at the tip and there's a ring for the chain that's attached to the horse's harnesses. I forgot about the pull ring and only built the chain ring. I squeezed a piece of 0.6mm copper wire till it was flat on both ends. Then the center portion was bent into a U shape. I cut off a single chain link that was used to represent the ring. Here's what it looks like. And now with the chain. On this pic you can see how the yoke is attached to the whiffle tree. I bent a strip of 0.2mm copper sheet around the whiffle tree and glued a U made from 0.6mm copper wire to the underside. A very good pick of an actual yoke. I made matching pieces from a 4mm balsa board. As I said before, the whiffle tree broke twice, and then I thought it was too short to look realistic. I made a new one from one of these beach rods. A bit of carving and a lot of sanding was necessary. I removed all metal parts from the balsa whiffle tree to recycle them and made the pull ring I forgot on the first version. Then I cut channels into the left and right side of the whiffle tree's tip. <laughs> 
The pearl ring was glued into place. I had to make new copper strips but was able to use the rest of the parts I made for the first whiffle tree. Some dry fitting, looking quite nice. Time to build the yoke. This time I used the well squeeze and bend method. That worked quite well. And once more some dry fitting. The yoke hung too low. The chain links I used were just too large, so I cut them off and made new ones from 0.5mm silver plated copper wire. I used the same wire and one link each of this chain for the last steel parts of the yoke. I like the result. My first very naive attempt to build the wheels. I chose the wrong material. Balsa is just too soft and it snapped off along the wood grain several times. Eight spokes aren't enough for wheels of that size, but worst of all was that I didn't think of building hubs. A hub makes the wheel. If it's missing there won't be a wheel. It's as simple as that. For my second attempt I used wooden spatulas. I wanted to build the rim from four parts. Two half rings on inner and outer side. I sent the channels for the spokes into the beech wood. Cutting out these quart rims was a chore. Of course they snapped off along the wood grain as did the balsa before. Before I could go on I had to build a simple little jig. To cut out a circle of the wheel's size I sent a large nail onto a sharp tip and cutting edge. It was used with my compass. It worked but took quite a while to cut out the circle. The plastic ring was glued exactly onto the base plate. Then a piece of 1mm copper wire was glued into the center of the circle. I had two kinds of tubes I wanted to use to build the hubs. Here you can see the origin of the larger tube. The smaller tube slides perfectly into the larger one. Here's one hop on the jig. It's a prototype. Next I glued a strip of copper sheet around the inner end of the hub. Looking nice on the axle. My mistake was to believe I could drill 12 holes for the spokes into the hub. Next day I woke up with a picture in my mind and I started building the hubs according to that picture.
Instead of trying to drill holes into the outer tube, I split the tube and left 1.5mm space between the parts. The jig was very useful for the assembly. The copper strips were glued into place and the hubs were ready for the spokes. I used bamboo toothpicks again. The tips were used the way they were. The ends that were to be glued to the hubs needed to be sanded into a matching angle. I only had two of these half rings I made from beech wood. I used them because they were there but had something else in mind for the other wheels. Anyway, the spokes fit neatly into the channels. And here you can see how the wheels are secured on an actual wagon. I wanted to do something similar that should at least look like the real deal. I drilled holes into the smaller tube and opened them a little more on one side. Then I inserted the tips of toothpicks and cut them off. A short piece of 1mm copper wire was glued into the tube to represent the axle's end. All hubs finished and waiting for the wheel assembly. I glued all spokes to the first hub and wheel half. The symmetry was almost perfect. Next I used some poplar veneer for the 12 parts between the spokes. I decided to build the other three wheels from veneer but had no real plan at that time. I made the outer wheel half from veneer but had to deal with two parts that came off while sanding. Replacing them wasn't as difficult as I thought. It only took me five minutes to do this. A strip of copper sheet is wrapping completed this first wheel. I was really happy with the result, but as I thought about the mistakes I made I realized that One day later I really had a plan on how to build the rims. Veneer was the right material, but to give it enough stability I had to make my own plywood. Two pieces each were glued together crosswise. Great literature put enough pressure onto the soft veneer. Poplar has a rather faint wood grain. The wire brush made it visible as you can see here. I used a compass to outline the rings I needed. A 1mm hole was drilled into the center. That was needed to put the parts onto the jig after cutting out the larger circle. The positions of the spokes were marked. Then the channels were sanded and the inner circles were cut out. While sanding, the first wheel lost 2 mm in diameter. Instead of 30 mm, only 28 mm were left. I had to glue a strip of 1 mm styrene to the jig's ring to get the right size. This copper ring was loose, but that was no problem. It would be glued to the hub again along with the spokes. And here's the second rear wheel. 
I'm sorry, but I forgot to take a pick with the outer half of the rim glued into place. I continued with the front wheels. To adjust the jig, another strip of 1mm styrene was necessary. The front wheel's diameter is 26mm. I repeated all the steps I did before. The rim house were marked at one point to make sure for a proper alignment. That made the assembly much easier. A little bit of sanding was needed to make the wheels look as close to a circle as possible. And there was one thing left to do after the wrapping with copper strips was done. I glued short pieces of 0.2mm wire to the splint pin. They represent the loop that secures the pin. The wheels look nice on the wagon. If you thought building the wheels must have been the most difficult part of the build, you're as mistaken as I was. The brake was because I couldn't find any picks that showed clearly what they look like. And on the picks I have, all brakes look a bit different. Guesswork, artistic license, you name it. Here's what I built. The first thing to do was building extensions for the bent parts of the hitch. Again, I could have avoided this if I had made for better planning and had made some drawings. The extensions were made from three parts each. A long and a short strip of beech wood and a piece of 1mm copper wire. I made channels for the wire and glued the wooden pieces together. Then I drilled holes into the hitch's ends and used CA glue to attach the extensions. The brake's main structure was built the way I built the front axle. The long parts of the extensions would be cut to size as soon as I was sure about the actual length. The brake blocks were made from balsa. I chose it because it's easier to shape. Then the blocks were glued to the outer edges of the structure. After dry fitting with the front wheels I cut the extensions to length. The brake lining was made from coarse wet sanding paper. On the actual brakes leather, or more precisely suede was often used. I thought the sanding paper would come quite close to the suede's look. Next I made braces for the hitch. I saw them on pics of actual hay wagons. Then I built guides or rails for the brake structure. They prevent the brake from moving sideways. Braces for the brake blocks were also needed. During this build I almost fell in love with this copper sheet. The first dry fitting revealed what I had feared. The cutaway for the front axle was way too short now. The use of balsa paid off once more. I used the razor saw, my hobby knife and a sanding stick to get this section into its final shape. The second dry fitting showed that my work was good enough to rotate the front axle freely.
Then I started building the brake mechanism. A crank with a spindle and a connection block for the actuator where the first parts are built. These parts are visible in different versions on all actual hay wagons. Then a movable guide for the actuator was built. It sits in a bracket and rotates while the actuator glides forward and backwards in the guide. Then the actuator was made from 1mm copper wire. It was bent downwards by 90 degrees behind the guide. The rest of the mechanism. Two more rods, a coil spring, a three parts cross member and some tie downs. First the short rod was attached to the middle section of the brake structure. Then the cross member was glued into place. Two bolts were added for more realism. Then the coil spring was attached to the right side of the cross member and the second rod was connected to the actuator. Believe it or not, it took me two hours and cost me about 10 centimeters of copper wire to get the coil spring where I wanted it to be. The disadvantage of a real spring is that it uh, springs. And now for a bit of theory. Moving the actuator to the right by rotating the crank moves the rod that's connected to it to the left and vice versa. The guide converts to motion and serves as a pivot. The actuator glides forward and backwards in the guide. Rotating the crank into the closed position pulls the two rods and the brake forwards to the wheels. Rotating the crank into the open position releases the brake and the spring pulls it backwards. And here's the weak point in the theory. Something is missing here and I don't know what it is. Since all these parts will hardly be seen, I don't mind too much. All that'll be visible looks good and realistic enough. I guess you'll agree after looking at the peaks of the drive fitting. The moment of truth. I can't help it, but I'm more than satisfied with the results. This was the most complicated bit of scratch building I ever did. I worked for 10 days on the wagon, less than on the Opel Admiral, and here I have a result I can show you.
next video on this and the pigsty will be the complete painting and weathering, so please stay tuned. That there was a resin kit available, I still would have built one from scratch. This kit is 24 euros and I didn't want to spend that much money. And the wagon is not what I was looking for either, so I had no choice. A farm needs a wheelbarrow. There are two different versions available by Plus Model and there are only 3 euros 50 each. The only drawback is that available doesn't mean they're available right now. I've got no idea when they will be in stock again. Tell me what you think I should do in the comment section.